So, hello again. <laughs> Hi. Um, it's good to have you all here. And I am just delighted to be able to have a service here as well as online. And thank you for joining us online, and thank you for joining us right here. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to thank you that we are here in spirit and also in person. And we want to give you thanks because when two or three of us are gathered together, whether we are in the air or whether we're in person, you are in the midst of us. And your spirit of love binds us together in faith, in hope, and in love. So we give you thanks. May the words of your Bible and may the words of my mouth be pleasing to you and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The interruption. Yes. So we're going to talk about the interruption. But first, let's, um, let's have some pop-up memories. Because, well, I, I love these apps that sometimes, you know, sometimes they are a nuisance. But sometimes they're good because they help me remember things. And people are forgetful, right? So sometimes these apps will bring up pop-up memories on my phone and on the app. So these are some of the, these are some of the lovely pictures uh, that we took the last two Christmases ago. So haven't these people <laughs> look lovelier than before? Yes, they, they are, right? And also for us, for those children and for those young people, how much they have grown. It's good to see them. And January. January felt long, right? <laughs> yes, so these are some of the New Year, New Year pop-ups uh, for us, you know. 2020, and people hope that 2021 would be better. And little did we know that some people say it, and it's quite true, that January, you know, this January, how do you say it? Like, it has paid, last year has paled in comparison to this January. So all the starts and the stops, not easy, right? And who doesn't, well, who doesn't like putting down or taking down Christmas decorations? <laughs> yeah, I got a few hands up, in, including mine. I don't like taking down Christmas decorations. I want to leave them up as long as I can. But this year, it's funny. This year, you know what? I put up Valentine's decorations on January 6th. <laughs> Midweek of the first week of January. And I can't wait. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I did because I had, at that time, I had no idea that I, when I first put them up, right, that it was a way to actually help me deal with all the interruptions that had come this January. And today is the last day of January, right? So, with all those starts and stops, all those back and forth, what are we to do about that? Let's look at the scripture. Let's look at Mark 1, 21 to 28. For those of you who are online, yeah, you can take your Bibles out or your phones out. We are going to read together Mark 1, 21 to 28. So verse 21, it says, They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to, to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. 
the impure spirit, shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And now, next, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 8 to 6, and we're going to compare one aspect of it, okay, with the two uh, passages. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, on the screen there. But for us, there is one God, the Father by whom all things were created and for whom we live, and there is one Lord. Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created and through whom we live. So, the Holy One of God in Mark's story, compare it with 1 Corinthians 8, 6. There is one God. Now, Paul in 1 Corinthians, he proclaims there's one God and one Lord, right? The unclean spirit in Mark 1 also announces that Jesus is the Holy One of God. So why was it okay to announce for Paul and not okay in the Mark story? Have you thought about that? Why in the Mark story, you know, Jesus told the spirit to keep quiet? The answer key is in one word in the story there. Authority. Authority. In verse 22, Jesus taught them as one who had authority. And in verse 27, again, a new teaching and with authority. Now, authority, I looked it up. Um, a few, a few dictionaries and a few different things. And then in Strong's exhaustive, exhaustive concordance, uh, authority, it means authority, jurisdiction, liberty, power. So most of the time in the Bible when this word um, is translated, it's usually translated as authority or power. But then I looked at I looked deeper into it, and also it says privilege, that is subjectively, force, capacity, competency, and freedom. So authority, power, privilege, they are all linked, connected. Authority and power. So when you hear those two words, what brings up in your mind? What comes up in your mind? Maybe not very positive. Maybe something quite negative nowadays in the connotation. Maybe it brings, even if, depending on your background, maybe it even, you may even cringe at the word authority or power. Because in this day and age, there is a lot of abuse of power and abuse of authority that's going around, right? And, you know, you can think of, well, both men and women can abuse their authority. I mean, just recently, our governor general had to resign because she was abusing her authority and making work life really hard for some of her workers. There's abuse of authority everywhere. In the home, in the workplace, <clears throat> maybe in the schools, anywhere you go. Because anywhere you go, there are people. And people, unfortunately, we have our sinful nature. And some of us will abuse our authority. Now, abuse of authority betrays our trust for that person. Abuse of authority hurts people deeply. So, by putting the spotlight today on the word privilege to interpret authority, hopefully it will help us shed some light in this story, in the scriptures. 
Okay? So, let's go back to the story. Where did the story happen in? The synagogue. That's right. What were they doing in the synagogue with Jesus? People were listening to Jesus and other teachers teach. So, in other words, they were having a worship service, not unlike today, that we are having a worship service here. And that's a nice wood carving um, in a museum that um, depicts the scene that Jesus uh, was teaching in the synagogue on the screen there. Well, Jesus was not on the screen, but <laughs> this picture of the word, the wood carving is on the screen. So now, what was Jesus teaching about? What was he teaching about? A little hint? Just a few verses earlier in Mark 1, Jesus announced, The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. So Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of God. That's right. That is when? In verse 22, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority or who had power or who had privilege, not as the teachers of the law. He was teaching with authority, with power, and with privilege. When suddenly, something happened. What happened? A man in their synagogue, possessed by an unclean and evil spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of God. And suddenly, he was interrupted. The whole service got interrupted. Imagine that. By the man who was possessed by an evil spirit. This evil spirit even called out Jesus as the Holy One of God. But it was also when, at that time, that Jesus told him to be quiet. So why not let the evil spirit proclaim that Jesus was the Holy One of God? Why? By telling the, peep, the evil spirit to... Shut up, actually, you know, be quiet. In today's word is shut up. Jesus was showing us his privilege, his privilege. And he is demonstrating to us what comes with that privilege. Because from that privilege comes healing. From that privilege comes wholeness. Instead of breaking someone's spirit, that authority brings wholeness to us. Instead of dividing people behind their backs, that authority restores relationships. With that privilege comes restoring people's dignity. Yes, from that privilege comes healing, comes wholeness, comes restoration, and comes reconciliation of relationships. Jesus' believers also have that privilege. Don't believe me? Look at Luke 9, 1. Jesus called together his 12 disciples. So his disciples, those who follow him closely. So all Jesus' believers and followers. And gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Luke 10, 19. Look, I have given you, also talking to his disciples, that you will have all authority over all the power of the enemy. And the verse that we know and love very much as Baptists and as Christians Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's Jesus. And Jesus is passing that authority, that privilege 
that power onto his disciples. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, so on and so forth. So that same authority, that same power has been given to us between his first coming and his second coming. His second coming. We don't know when he's coming next. We don't know when he is coming back. But we do know that we have to be ready, don't we? We cannot get lazy or complacent. Everyone needs to be alert because we all, we all have to give an account in front of God that day. And God is the judge. But if you're being interrupted with all those noise, like in the story, the man shouting, crying out in loud voice, and at last the shrieking, it is hard to focus on that privilege. By telling the spirit in that man to be silent, Jesus has demonstrated that we need to focus on silencing the noises around us or the noises that are inside of our heads or in our hearts or emotions. When we're using that privilege though, the power to, or sometimes, you know, we might use that privilege or that power to get more power. Or we need, you know, to just follow, or maybe we will follow our emotions, follow what's in our, in our minds, the noises in our minds. But it is in that time, and in those times, that we need to tell ourselves to be quiet, and sometimes even to shut up. Because all that talking in our heads that we're hearing, we're not going to hear the Holy Spirit's voice, right? So we need to silence the noise that's around us. Or sometimes when we're doing too much. Just too much of everything else. And we're not spending time to quiet down, to read five minutes of the Bible each day, to pray for five minutes for yourself, and for your family or for your church friends. We need to stop and we need to be quiet and tell those voices to be quiet and to focus on the voice of God. So remember that we have this privilege all Jesus believers have this privilege. The privilege also to bless others, to pray for the sick, to make a phone call, to say hello, to initiate a video chat. The privilege to encourage others instead of finding fault, to give a cup of cold water to the least privileged, to love instead of to criticize. The privilege to give your time and your efforts to lead something, to give your money to the church. Those are all the privileges. But have you, or have I, or have we thought of giving as a privilege? Yes, we have been given that privilege, that power that authority, but we also need to exercise that privilege. Because if we don't do that, it would be like a baby who has just learned to say his or her first words and then never says anything again in his or her life. Actually, that baby, after learning the first words, that baby will keep talking. That baby will keep repeating the same word over and over again, right? Like, ma, 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 ta, 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 
nonstop because the baby will naturally want to exercise his or her right, the right of speech, to be more and more fluent. In this case, in speaking and in talking, and you will never have a quiet day until that baby leaves home, <laughs> right? <sighs> also, have you heard of something that that expression that says, "If you don't use it, you lose it," right? So, but when you exercise that privilege with your faith. Like the baby exercising his or her first words, you will feel empowered. The more you exercise that privilege, the more empowered you will feel. So, what can I take away from this sermon today? I can exercise that privilege to focus on silencing the noises in me, in my mind, in my emotions. I can also exercise the privilege to focus on the Word of God. God never abuses His authority, so we can trust Him and we can trust His Word, even if we can trust nobody else. Right? We can definitely trust Him. We can trust him no matter what. He will never hurt us. He will never leave us or forsake us. And he is always there for us. So we can trust him, and exercise this privilege that he has given us to focus on his word and what he says. Three. I can exercise that privilege to give consistently to the work of God, because it's not a command; it is a privilege for me to serve God, to give with a thankful heart. When we are convinced that it is our privilege, that it is our privilege to exercise our right to give to God, we will feel more and more. Empowered. So, let us use the privilege or the power from God to build people up, not tearing people down. And let's embrace opportunities to serve, to build community. Now, we have been given an opportunity this year to build up our playground, for example. We have been given some resources and money to build up this playground of our church, so that it will be more of a playground for the whole community of Midland. That it will become a Midland community playground, and we're going to have children's worship and children's church down the road this year. That we are planning. We're going to get children and youth together downstairs and do a celebration service once in a while, for for us to learn and for us to disciple each other, the kids and the youth, and teaching them how to be the next generation of Christian leaders. So, will you focus on the privilege to give and to serve? And will you choose to continually being disturbed or being interrupted by the noise around you and inside of you? I will choose his privilege to focus on his word, to focus on giving to God and God's family. So, I'm going to play "Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God" because Jesus, he was in the story teaching about the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God has started in our hearts already. So, seek the kingdom of God first, and all these things will be given to us. 
Seek him and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. And then I will pray for us. So think about, think about what I've just said. Think about and reflect on what the story means to you and what privilege means to you when I play this. of God and focus on his word. Let us pray. Rachel, yeah. can I just interrupt you? Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a uh, message from Bill. I, we forgot to mention, Ken Newell passed away on Friday. And uh, just, I, I'm sure all of you know, but he's not a member of our church, but certainly uh, uh, a loved member of this community for many, many years and uh, represented the veterans all these years. Many of us know him from that. Um, so just be praying for his family, and uh, maybe Rachel will pray for that family, Ken Newell, as she prays. So Ken Newell? Ken Newell. Newell. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank all right. you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Alden. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> also, um, I was talking to um, Lois um, to yesterday. Yeah. And um, she said that um, Eben is now in Kelowna's hospital. So... Um, he lives not in Kelowna, but he's now in Kelowna's hospital. So we can pray for him and pray that all the tests <clears throat> will go well for him and that God will heal him as well. So um, let's, let's pray. Lord Jesus, our dearly Heavenly Father, in this world there's troubles and we lift these two families particularly into your hands now. We pray for the family of Ken. 
We pray, God, that at this particular time, that you will comfort them, and that your presence will be ever so close and ever so near in their hearts. And Lord, I pray that their, your peace will reach to every one and everyone's home that no can. And that you will comfort them at this time of sorrow. We also want to pray for Lois's son, Eben. And we pray that God, you will touch his body and heal him right now in Jesus' name. And we pray for the wisdom of doctors and we pray for the tests to go well in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for ourselves now at the end of this service. Thank you for this power of choice. Thank you for this privilege that you have given us, the privilege to choose. But it does take faith. It does take faith to exercise the privilege from God, from you, our Heavenly Father. So, God, help us choose faith and help us choose to silence the noises and help us choose to embrace the privilege to do things your way and to trust in you. So help us, oh God, be our vision today and every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.